Hello everybody, my name is Jimmy Smith and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel and we have a session on WSET level three on this one and this is the growing environment which is part of chapter five in your textbook and this is looking at viticulture of course. So this is um, one session so this is just going to complete the sunlight section of the growing environment. You may notice that other sections uh, such as heat are broken into different parts. Sunlight is only one and this will be available on YouTube as free content. The other sections like heat, which is broken into numerous parts. Um, the first part is always available as free content, but the others uh, are only available to members of the Wine with Jimmy channel, the e-learning portal, which is found winewithjimmy.com, uh, which is a very useful portal for those of you that are preparing uh, for your WSET level three examination, as it includes a wonderful amount of content in terms of extra videos, many more extra videos. Uh, and then things like um, mock questions, short written questions, multiple choice questions, revisions, sessions, uh, flashcards, uh, you name it, it's very useful. So do check it out. That's winewithjimmy.com, the e-learning portal. It is a very, very big, um, big help for you for your examination. So um, we are going to crack on with sunlight. If you do have any comments, questions or concerns, please do get in touch via the social media that you find at the bottom of each slide. Or you can comment below the YouTube video just here or get in touch with us via our website. That's winewithjimmy.com uh, and we'll be happy to help. OK, so let's crack on with the sunlight section of the growing environment. We'll talk a little bit first of what a vine will need, then the factors that affect the sunlight, and then finally any hazards that that will go through. Lots of pictures to help you understand this section. So first up, let's have a look. All uh, right, here we go. So what a vine needs, first of all, of course, the vine, as any plant, will need sunlight for photosynthesis. So this is converting the sun's energy into the growth of the plant, but then also into things like crops. So things like grapes in our instance. So that is the creation of the grapes and glucose within the grapes. So sunlight is needed to power photosynthesis. Now that's with a lot of other things, uh, but we're just looking at sunlight in this section. Generally and very broadly speaking, we are saying that more light means more photosynthesis. So that's more growth and then potentially more growth of grapes as well. Um, also aids flowering and fruit set. So this is, uh, of course, after bud burst, if the grown uh, goes through its vegetative cycle and grows and then it will eventually flower and then fruit will be set. That's what we call fruit set. If it is very sunny during those times, it will actually promote good flowering and then fruit scent, which actually sets the amount, the volume of the harvest of the crop. Uh, so that's quite, of course, important for many viticulturalists that are looking at, uh, of course, a bit more volume. So that aids flowering. And then it also will aid more growth of the vine, as we talked about, more vigor, and then more glucose will be created, and as well as other things in the grapes. And that, of course, is what we need for the conversion to alcohol. OK, so sunlight needed for those conditions. Now, let's just have a little bit of a chat about the factors that will affect sunlight. So what can affect it? Now, if you have watched a previous videos, the ones on heat, you will know that latitude will affect heat. Um, but we are talking purely on this section about sunlight. And in order to understand that, we need to understand how the Earth rotates around the sun and what kind of a tilt it has. And here you can see on this diagram, a very useful diagram to understand the position of the Earth, the tilt of the Earth, as it rotates its way around the Sun. So you'll see that the Earth is not like a map. When we look at a map of the Earth, it looks it's perfectly level. It's not that case. The Earth is tilted roughly at around 24 degrees. Uh, and that's what you see in this diagram. If you look at the line from the South Pole to the North Pole, you'll see it's not 
uh, perfectly straight, it is tilted. And then running perpendicular to the uh, south to north pole line is what you will find is the latitudinal lines. Now, these are all these lines that have been drawn on the Earth here, including uh, the Tropic of Capricorn, the equator, the Tropic of Cancer. And then I've added in a couple of lines here, which are roughly corresponding to the growing area of the Northern Hemisphere. So the 30 to 50 North. Now, please excuse the lower line. That should be a little bit lower than that. Uh, but um, it, it will do for now. So you can see actually it goes through the bottom of, of Spain there. That's about 35, 36 north. Uh, and uh, that line needs to go a little bit south there. But you get the idea. So if it's tilted, we need to understand then why this is the case and, and how this affects it. Because you will see that um, there will be a longer day length during summer during this summer solstice. So you'll see here, the summer solstice is the June the 21st. June the 20th or 21st normally falls on the 21st. And in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, which is this part just up here, of course, you will see that there will be a longer day. You can see that that is the amount of time that will be in under nighttime. And then this area is the amount of time that will be under sunlight. And that's actually given to you here. You'll see that the um, the equator during the summer solstice will have the normal 12 hours of daylight, as it will always have. The Tropic of Cancer, just above that, will have about 13 and a half hours of sunlight. And then all the way up to the top, the Arctic Circle is purely sunlight. So 24 hours of sunlight, of daylight. Um, we're looking in between the Arctic Circle, of course, and the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, and that's our 30 to 50 north zone. And to give you some numbers here, if we have a look at um, London, London, the capital city of the United Kingdom, this has about 16 and a half hours of sunlight on the summer solstice. If you go down to Paris, uh, so of course the capital city of France on mainland Europe, just below London, that has about 16 hours during the summer solstice. If you go to Madrid, about 15, which is about the same as Rome also in Italy. So why, uh, why do you need to understand this? So summer days are longer due to the Earth's tilt. So therefore in June, this is late June, going into July, going into August, you will have plenty of hours of sunlight during the growth season for these vines. So this means that you'll get the opportunity to really ripen the grapes um, in these areas. Now you need heat in combination with sunlight. Vines need to be kept warm in order to go through their growth season. So you can't go and plant vines in the Arctic Circle. Uh, it has all the sunlight during summer, 24 hours of it seems perfect. Unfortunately, it's just too cold. So we need that balance between the heat and the sunlight. But if we give you an example here, if you look at Germany, which will sit at quite at the high end of the 30 to 50 north towards sort of 48, 49 north, it's very cold, but it is just about warm enough for Riesling. Uh, so Riesling survives. Then it goes through the wonderful amount of sunlight during these summer nights and summer days and these summer months. And that means that you get plenty of opportunity to ripen fully Riesling. And also it's what creates the diversity within the grape variety, meaning that you can pick it at a protracted harvest, at a staggered harvest. So you can harvest it in September, in October, and over a number of weeks. Um, so you can have fresher, lighter styles, the rather complex. And then of course, there's all the other things like Botryatai styles, Passé Lagage, et cetera. So that's where you get real big diversity from one grape variety in a country like Germany, for instance. So that's latitude. Um, so longer summer days, uh, longer sunlight hours during the summer months leads to very good ripening in those regions. Then we have uh, the factors such as seas, lakes and rivers. Uh, so in this instance, you have uh, a picture of Lake Okanagan, which is in British Columbia, 
in Canada. Uh, and we have these vineyards where the picture is taken from in the foreground. But the reason why we have this picture is actually what is covering the top of this uh, wonderful picture is the cloud cover. And that is because that uh, there tends to be a greater amount of cloud cover where there are large bodies of water, such as lakes, such as this, Lake Okanagan. Uh, so vineyards that uh, are near these lakes, such as in this picture, may experience um, a decrease of sunlight due to the cloud cover in these areas. Um, in conversely to that, vineyards that are away from these lakes, but are still in central land masses, uh, so, you know, in, in continental land masses, they will have much sunnier conditions. And the major reason is it's due to evaporation of the water. That's what creates the cloud cover. OK, so that can actually diminish and decrease the amount of sunlight uh, in uh, due to the cloud cover. But there is a caveat to this, and that is the reflection of the sunlight off things like lakes and rivers, for instance. Here in this picture, you have the wonderful Mosul uh, River, which is found in Germany. Uh, and the arrows here are showing you that there can be light reflection off the river uh, or off any kind of lakes as well, which can create better conditions for ripening. Now, in this instance, in the Mosul, it is actually quite a thin river. So the amount of this reflection is not the greatest and will only affect very, very close vineyards to the river. But other rivers like, say, the Danube in Austria, uh, things like uh, the Rhine, for instance, um, they will have a significant effect due to them being much wider and a greater amount of light reflection, reflection from those. So that can actually increase the amount of sunlight being reflected onto the vines, thus can increase photosynthesis. Okay, so um, then we have to look at is aspect. Now, as mentioned on a previous video, which is a video about heat, aspect is the direction of the slope. Uh, so that is the general discussion of it. However, we need to understand that the word slope is there. So before we talk about the direction, they will be on slopes. And of course, slopes create or can create conditions for more sunlight. So a steep slope gives you um, a direction or a, um, a, a gradient which is towards the sun if it's facing in the right direction. So slopes will gain more solar radiation and thus more sunlight, gaining better ripening. So the slope effect is very important. And then we have, of course, the direction of the slope, which is a little bit more obvious, but vineyards that will face the equator will receive the most sunlight. Uh, of course, the sun being at its strongest along the equator, due to the fact it has the less distance to travel to the equator. So there's more solar radiation there as well. So in the northern hemisphere, as you can see in this diagram, south facing, which is towards the equator, will get the most sunshine. And this is something we've actually talked a little bit more about on the heat section as well. Uh, southeast, uh, which is also here, southeast will get a more gentle sunlight, southwest a more regressive sunlight. Uh, and that's in the northern hemisphere. That's because, of course, the sun rises in the east and it's generally um, not as intensive at that time. But in when it gets to its zenith, which is south facing and then kind of the afternoon sunlight southwest, that is when it's going to be much more intensive. OK, so the aspect is mightily important as well. And the last slide on aspect, but something we just actually touched on is um, looking at the, the distance the sunlight has to travel. Uh, so the greater distance from the equator, uh, the weaker the sun's energy. And that's really due, as you can see here, uh, due to the, um, the longer distance that the sunlight has to travel, as you can see at that top part there. So there is less uh, distance at the equator. So let's just pop that in here. It's going to be popped in green, but never mind. Um, so that's why, of course, it's remarkably uh, sunny at that area. Uh, and then if you therefore 
uh, I find your vineyards closer to the poles, which are further away. So really kind of looking at around 50 degree north, like Champagne, for instance, um, you really are going to have to try and maximize the sunlight you have because it has to travel a greater distance. So it's not as intensive. So maximizing it with things like canopy management, for instance, which uh, we'll, we'll touch upon on future videos. Okay, so that is aspect. Now, just the last couple of slides are to look at the problems. So the sunlight hazards, issues that may arise if there is too little or too much sunlight. So this sunlight, this uh, this picture here looks at um, a beautiful sweeping landscape, uh, and you've got some vineyards in the foreground. But once again, you've got some cloud cover at the top, and it's quite significant in that picture as well. So cloud cover at flowering can reduce the crop, uh, as uh, that's really reducing the yield. And that's due to uh, the fact that sunlight will be needed for flowering and fruit set. We mentioned that earlier on in the presentation. Uh, so um, that can really restrict the amount of, uh, of yield you'll find from the vineyard. And also throughout the year, uh, heavy cloud cover can also decrease the possibility of photosynthesis. Uh, so this will stop grapes from ripening fully. Uh, so this will really lead to some more kind of thinner um, and more kind of acidic wines as a result. Um, and the last one is really about too much sunlight. Uh, and here are a few grapes that have gone through some minor amounts of sunburn, but still some of them in the, ba in the background, they're quite significant. Uh, and um, intensely sunny conditions will lead to this, will lead to sunburn. And that sunburn will create bitter flavors within the skins. And of course, this can come out into the wine and can severely impact the style of wine. Um, but it's not a, a big problem. Um, it can be tackled. Uh, so, for instance, in very sunny locations, you'll have to create shading with your canopy management to protect your grapes. So where your grapes tend to fruit, um, above that, you will create a canopy, for instance. So in places like um, Argentina, where there is a huge amount of sunlight, certainly around Mendoza, 3000 hours of sunlight per year, varieties like Torontes, the white grape variety, can be impacted by sunburn quite significantly. So what they do in Mendoza is train the Torontes vines very high. That's higher than say you or me going up to say six to 10 feet tall and creating a nice big thick canopy at the top of it, which creates a shading effect. That is what is called the pergola or paral vine train system, pergola or paral. Let me just um, scribble them down here on the left hand side, pergola uh, or paral. And that is a way of, of um, really sort of tackling the issues of sunburn. Okay, so that uh, really finishes this section on um, the, uh, the sunlight part of the growing conditions, so the growing environment. I hope you found this exceedingly useful for your studies and I hope it's given you um, a bit of understanding behind this topic. Um, so this is the only section in the sunburn part. We'll be going on to water after this, but there's also other sections like heat as well, which are more multi-layered. There's more parts to them. As always, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, please do get in touch via the winewithjimmy.com website or you can mention a comment uh, in the section below this video on YouTube or get in touch via social media that you find on every slide. Uh, if you do find yourself in London, please come and see us for a class, for a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you very much. Goodbye.